Hey girl, hey, welcome back to my channel. It's your girl Misha. Thank you guys for joining me yet again for another review. We are back with a brand new review or reviews for Couples Retreat. This is going to be season three, episodes six and seven. Now, I didn't do it last week and I am behind for this week, but I'm going to combine both of the reviews together. So this review may be a little bit longer. Yeah, there's that. If you are new here, then welcome. I give lighthearted reviews with a little bit of laughter and a little bit of shade and a whole lot of detail. If you're back for a second or third time, then welcome back. Y'all, please don't hesitate to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. Share with a friend. Hit that notification bell so that you will be updated each and every time I upload a video. Now, child, let's get into it if we gonna get into it. Now, listen, I like I said, I'm going to combine six and seven together because, you know, the people ain't really just feeling couples retreat. But I really hate to keep starting reviews of shows and then just feeling like, mm, nah, I'm good. I'm kind of a follow through type of person. So child, they should only have 10 episodes tops. So after these two, it's going to be three more. So let's get into it. So when episode six first opens up, Chris is still up on the high beam. Now, remember, they went to do this trapeze type exercise and Chris was real scared and Breezy was trying to comfort her. So Breezy was like supporting her, but it really wasn't just given what it's supposed to have been gave. But that's just me. She went on through with it, even though she was scared as hell. Honey, I get it, okay? Because I do not do flying and I don't do all that. Honey, I don't do it. She said that she was proud of herself for letting that anxiety go and facing her fears. So AJ feels like Chris feels like her worth is tied to the relationship that she has with Breezy and she's valuable on her own and now she's learning it. I don't think she got all that from it. I really don't. I think she thought, oh, Breezy was supporting me. This is so great. Our relationship's so solid. I don't think she was thinking, I'm more than enough. I don't think she was thinking that. Moving forward. So they all start going up and Jalen, little bit toe chest, he get up there. So Fallon talking about, I see Tony, I see Tony. So Tony Gaskins was like, is that the name of his thing? Like his member, is that the name of it? Now, what kind of name is that? just yuck okay just yuck tony was like i'm offended honey as you should be <laughs> why would you name this man stuff tony these two are just weird honey sometimes they get me a little weirdo you know what fallon is one of those people that's better left a mystery just be pretty and mysterious we never had to hear you speak because it's just getting on my nerves so it's finally time for tyreek aka fat boy and he's scared as hell and he's scared out of his mind he's like nah i'm good I'm gonna do something down here on the ground. I don't even want to do it. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. He does not want to get up on that high level ladder. He doesn't want to get up there. So AJ was like, listen, just at least climb the ladder and then you'll be good. He did it. And he went on across, honey, halfway. He just dipped his toe in there. The way that he dropped down off that swing, y'all, I was hollering. If you have not seen episode six, then go back and watch just that part. Baby, the way he flopped down, it was hilarious. Okay, it was hilarious. Tony said he loved the fact that Tyreek was vulnerable and showed that he was not afraid. Yeah, because you know, he could have acted tough. You know, the men be trying to act real tough. No, I'm good. I'm good. Heart beating out of their chest. So I did appreciate the fact that he was, you know, vulnerable and said, I'm scared. So now that's over. AJ tells them they need to dress in Studio 54 attire for the dinner. Child Jalen don't know about no Studio 54. He might know about Nintendo 64, but he don't know about... <laughs> I don't even think he know about Nintendo 64. He's so young. Mm -mm -mm. In the next scene, Jock is hosting a little pregame before the dinner. So they're all talking about the trapeze exercise. So Fallon is asking the group after last night, who needs a plan B? Girl, be quiet. Like, see, things like this just cringy. That's why I said Fallon is better seen than heard. And I hate to say that, but some people just don't need to talk. Why are you asking these grown adult people? Did they have to use a plan B? Girl, what in the irresponsibility? Anywho, over on the other side, Shamari and Ronnie, they come in and the whole mood shifted. The entire mood of the room. Ronnie is like, yeah, you know, we went to sleep, so we ain't do nothing. So then Fallon asks, who wants more kids? So Kendra said, you know, she thought about it in maybe four or five years, which was a shock to Jocelyn because he looking like, say what now? You want to have kids with me? And I got nine? You want to have kids with me? Child, I don't know if they want to make it an even number or what, but she says she might in four or five years, so we shall see. Moving forward. Uh, Kendra, you better not have no kids with y'all because things are already toxic between the two of you, so just leave it alone. 
So everybody leaves to go get ready for the Studio 54 thing. Apollo and Shireen, they go have a one-on-one with AJ. So Shireen is telling AJ that they bump heads because Apollo doesn't listen to what she has to say. Apollo said they've been together nine years and in the real world, they've been together for three. So they have to figure out how to make things fit into this situation. Uh, It's a little bit too late now. You should have figured that out a long time ago. Shireen said basically everywhere he was, she went so she could be closer to him when he was in prison. Her daughter is 13 and basically they did time with Apollo. Girl not you stopped your life to do time with him while he was potentially serving life like what is going on honey Mm-mm. oh how did i get life 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 oh yeah 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 <laughs> honey shout out to jodeci oh it ain't no way honey Mm-mm-mm. not shireen asking apollo you gonna eat your cornbread oh hell no he just can't get right though he is definitely can't get right So she wants things to go back to how they were before he went into jail. Well, when they locked him up, he didn't have anything but time. You know, time to make you feel like you were the only one. Time to make you feel like everything was going to be great. Being together every day is when you see the real. That's when you really get to know a person. Now is when the hard work starts. Apollo used this lady. Now, this is just my opinion. I feel like he used this lady to pass the time. And I'm not sure if he really wants to be with her like that anymore. Now, that's just what I'm looking at when I see the screen. I just don't think he wants to be with her like that. He's trying to explain to her that he has to adjust to life outside of jail. But I just feel like Apollo always has excuses. Moving forward. So the couples are all dressed up and it's time for the Studio 54 of it all. Well, some of them dressed up, honey. Fat boy wearing a dang on hoodie. Sir, you could have Googled Studio 54. You got enough money to gamble. You got enough money to go down on the strip and find you the proper attire. This is a fool. So Ronnie was saying, you know, that Shamari is upset that he has to leave. I mean, she should be used to it by now. That's all you do is leave. So they're all sitting down eating dinner dressed in Studio 54 attire. Now, for me, I thought they were going to be at this makeshift nightclub and everybody was going to be getting it, honey. And we were going to be, you know, listening to good old music from Saturday Night Fever. But this was them sitting at a dinner dressed in Studio 54 clothing. AJ, what in the world is this? So they're sitting there. And Jocelyn is taking a little cat nap, talking about it's just self-preservation. I'm in self-preservation mode. (laughs) Boy, quit playing. Quit playing. Okay. So then AJ shows up. Okay, girl. Come on, legs. When I tell you that woman, no, she got some legs for days. Okay, sure. So she comes, she sit down. She complimented Shamari because Shamari was looking really good. Okay. She looked great. So she was like, where has this girl been this whole time? And she was like, well, you know, I did gain 30 pounds. Listen, Shamari, we all gain a little weight, honey, when they put that four in front of our number. It's fine, but you're still fine. Beautiful, honey, snatched. Small, medium, large, you're everything. Don't worry about that, but I know you have to feel good about you. Trust me, I understand, girl. I'm going through the same thing. AJ feels like there's an underlying issue. I believe it is too. I believe that she feels stagnant and she feels stifled. And I mean, we'll get to it later. So AJ is telling them that they decided to award a prize for a one-on-one date to a couple that they feel did the exercises the best. So the winner of the prize is Breezy and Chris. So in the confessional, Jock gonna say, now nah, I don't want to sound like a hater, but I hate how they throw it in our face that they have no issues. She's the perfect co-parent, the perfect bathwater runner. <laughs> hell is a bathwater runner but Jocelyn listen I'm with you because I know something is not right now I just I don't know honey I don't know maybe there is a such thing as a per maybe I'm projecting and there is a such thing as a perfect couple mm-hmm. so now the dinner is over Apollo and Shireen they're back in the room they're talking about them and how they argue and this that and this and that so Shireen is telling him listen I've been more than patient with you I'm sick of being patient you need to do what you need to do Get it together or leave it alone. So it's the next day. Ronnie landed in LA. Shamari went to meet with AJ. So she tells Shamari that she's not going to be there today. So she wants Shamari to co-host with Tony as far as the exercises go for the couples. So she starts talking to her about, you know, what she keeps saying about her weight and how she's feeling. So Shamari said that her boys take up most of her time and Ronnie is never there. So AJ feels like she's not taking accountability for anything. Listen, it's easier said than done. Two kids and no help. 
that's not an easy feat. So for everybody that keeps saying, well, she's not taking accountability, kids will run you up the wall. Okay, especially two of them the exact same age with all that energy. Like, no, that's why it's meant for two people to be together to have the children. Honey, it's hard. So AJ is asking her if she had an illness. So AJ told her, would you rather wait to get sick before you try to prevent it? Or would you try to prevent getting sick? She was like, I don't really know who I am anymore. I get it, Shamari. I'm trying to lose 15 pounds right now, honey. It's hard, especially as you get older. But you owe it to yourself to show up for you. Now, I do have to say that. She's really struggling. And I hope that she's seeing someone separate from this show. Because it's really important that you see someone and talk to someone. Because I started to let myself go slowly. And I feel like now I'm starting to put the pieces back together and I'm starting to get me back. And like I said, you look great, but you still need to show up for you. And that mental is really what needs work. Because if the mental ain't right, then the physical ain't going to be right. The sexual ain't going to be right. The marriage ain't going to be right. The mommy ain't going to be right. You just got to get yourself together. Moving forward. Also, I feel like she's not happy with Ronnie and Ronnie can't see it. You got to find the time somewhere to be present, Ronnie. Okay, all that shucking and jiving down there with Bill Bill DeVoe and them. You need to see what's going on with your wife. Because she about to boom like in 808. Honey, it's going to be a fool. In the next scene, Chris and Breezy, they're off on their zip line date. And I was thinking, how was this a prize when Chris was scared as hell the first time? But anyway, on the, car, on the way there in the car, Breezy is telling AJ that they haven't went through anything here because they went through hell already. And they're on the other side of it now. She said during the panini... They were stuck together and they were really dealing with each other and they were forced to deal with each other. Now, listen, a lot of divorces and babies came from that quarantine. So I get it. But exactly what was happening, though, you ain't saying nothing. So they get there. All that talking. And AJ was scared as hell to get up on the zip line. I said, girl, now you telling them to face their fears and you scared. I have always wanted to go down on Fremont Street in Vegas and do the zip line, but I don't know, child. I don't know. Is it old? Because, honey, you know, Fremont Street is old. So is the zip line old, too? Child, I don't know, honey. The way things go in these days, I'm just, I'm good. Now, back to Breezy and Chris. Everybody dealt with something during the quarantine, but I still want to know what the issues were because they didn't just mysteriously disappear. How did you work through said issues? What were the issues that you were forced to face when you were together? Like, these are the things we need to know. So, anywho, the couples get together with Tony and Shamari to learn how to argue. They have to reenact an argument that they have had before, and they have to play each other in the argument. So, Tyreek and Tiana, they go first. She is supposed to be acting out her discovering a DM from another woman. So, he starts to pretend to be her, and baby, I was hollering. I was hollering. Seeing himself back, he said he realized that he could be more considerate of her. So Apollo and Shireen go next. She's being his controlling self and he's just standing there looking because he don't know nothing about Shireen, honey, at all. She said, I mean, you can't even say nothing. Like, why are you not saying anything? She said she cannot stand how Apollo behaves. So Tony asked him if he doesn't change, can she see herself staying with him? And she said, not long. He said, oh, she's not going anywhere. I can control this. I control this entire situation. Okay. Okay. Apollo getting ready to tick me off. Now let's move on into episode seven. So in episode seven, they're still out by the pool and they're doing that exercise. So they're still role playing, arguing as their partner. So Apollo is saying no matter what Shireen says, he can control it. Apollo just wanted somebody to hold him down while he was in the pen. And he ain't fooling me. Now that he is out and back, out on the street he's back to being the apollo that phony fei fei wanted to go away from her with this i do not feel like apollo is genuinely interested in continuing his relationship with shireen he can't be phaedra left you for dead okay and here you are with shireen she willing to bend over backwards and you don't want that so what do you want so it's not their time anymore they didn't get anything accomplished so then Fallon and Jalen, they come up. They switch places about her wanting to have sex. Basically, she begs for it and he turns her down. Listen, Fallon, that man ain't interested at all. And that's all I'm going to say, okay? He ain't interested at all. 
and that's embarrassing girl let me tell you something honey okay because i'm a little bit older than you you older than him i'm older than you i'm speaking directly to you honey you ain't got to beg no man for sex they willing to have sex with you no matter what okay you damn near have to fight them off with a stick if they don't want to do it he's just not that into you I'm just saying they want to get into it as they get into it. So the fact that you have to beg him and he says no, because it's early in the morning and his excuse is I don't like morning sex. Sis, come on now, wake up. So then Jocelyn and Kendra go up and they're arguing about him telling her that he had another baby. Oh my gosh. Now why on earth would they make them do that? Kendra is finally getting to a place where she's not always mad and jostling us to death. Like, they just gonna set them back by doing this. I know Jock was scared as hell, but he went up there and they did it. The way Jock kept saying, Jocelyn, Jocelyn, Jocelyn. <laughs> he already know Kendra gonna jostle us to death, honey. He said that when he was going through that though, he was depressed and he was, you know, just wasn't himself because he had to keep that information from her. And she said, y'all, that she has learned to take some accountability as it pertains to what triggers her. Yes, Kendra. I'm so, I'm so, I'm so proud of you. I am so proud of you, Kendra. Because listen, I didn't think you were going to get it. The people on the Twitter were tearing you up, girl, and you got it. Now, I just hope you apply it. So Shamar is off to the side and she mad because Ronald isn't there. Girl, you'll be fine. Apollo goes for a one-on-one -on -one with AJ in the next scene. And he's telling her that he and Shireen, they clash. AJ wants him to tell Shireen what he went through when he was locked up. And he said he stayed connected to the outside world. So when he came home, it was like he never left. But then he turns around and tells her that he stayed in solitary confinement for 100 days. Sir, there is no way that your mind is still the same after being in solitary confinement for 100 days that is developed to break you mentally so i'm not believing that so then he tells the story about aiden being concerned about him while he was in there and it just broke his heart like aiden wanted to empty out his piggy bank and everything to make sure apollo was gonna eat basically he was gonna put some money on his daddy books child it's just too much y'all know what those poor babies in a way y'all I'm kind of glad that they weren't on the Real Housewives of Atlanta during that time because I'm sure it would have been harder to deal with with the camera in your face. Just think about it. Apollo was gone for five years. Those babies were basically on camera from the time they were born. We were in the hospital room. So for them to go through all of those major things and having to show up for the world on camera, that's too much. So it really was a blessing that Phaedra was not on during those years that Apollo was in jail. It really is a blessing. In the next scene, Jock and Kendra go to work out with Apollo and Shireen. So Kendra thinks that she may have a baby with Jock and Apollo is telling us about how he wanted to have another one, but he doesn't know. He said one day Aiden told him that he felt betrayed and felt like Apollo had left and abandoned him and Phaedra. So when Aiden started playing football, Apollo was like, let me just try to get this one thing right. If I can be consistent, always at the games, coaching and doing everything I can, then maybe things will get better. And he said one day Aiden told him, you know what? I think our relationship is getting better. Aiden is a very smart young man. He really is. For him to be able to recognize that he felt abandoned. And then after Apollo was trying to recognize that our relationship is getting better. That's awesome. So anyway, he said, you know, things started getting better and it brought him closer. In the next scene, all the couples go to a comedy show. Now it's completely empty with only the people on the cast. So Tony Rock was the comedian. Now, personally, this is for me. Tony Rock is not my type of comedy. He's just not. Okay. Him nor Chris Rock. The Rocks, I don't get a chuckle. Okay. I don't get a chuckle, but that's just me. So he was roasting some couples and of course he was praising Breezy and Chris. And so he ended up calling Fallon Stella because y'all know from the movie how Stella got a groove back because Fallon is nine years older than Jalen. So she cussed him out and then she walks out and starts crying. So her and Jalen go outside to talk about it. And she's like, you know, people are always labeling me with Simon. I was a gold digger and with you, I'm Stella. Like I'm just sick of it. 
Well, ma'am, you are older than he is. That's a common joke that people make. They say that because Stella was older than Tay Diggs' character. The only difference is you act more childish than Jalen. Because when AJ showed up on the scene, Fallon stands up talking about, I'm getting sex. That sounds crazy. That sounds crazy. I just want you to know that. You act more childish than he does. Okay, and I'm sorry, but you were not with Simon because of his smashing good looks. Let's just keep it real, okay? Now, I know you mad the people labeling you and whatnot, but the labels seem like the labels fit, in my opinion, allegedly. <laughs> His child, I don't want no problems. So during the show, Ronnie shows back up and Shamari is pissed that he left. This isn't new, okay? He leaves every season. At this point, y'all are season regulars. Stop signing up for this show and agreeing to do this, knowing that he won't be able to be there consistently throughout the whole thing. He's working. You know what? I feel that deep down Shamari resents Ronald because she's been reduced to this housewife and Ron is fake supporting her, restarting her career. But she knows deep down in her heart that Ronnie does not want her to restart that career because once she is not strapped down to the confines of her home and those two babies she will see that it's a whole new world out there honey it's given very much aladdin and princess jasmine a whole new world don't you dare close your eyes honey once you realize it's a whole new world out there then ronnie and his no eyebrows might be on the inside and you might be on the outside looking in and that's just that on that and that was the end of the episodes Y'all comment down below and tell me exactly what you thought about episodes six and seven. I put them together and I kind of like doing it that way because I got both of them out of the way, but I also don't like to put reviews out too late. And one of them is a week late and the other one is a few days late. And y'all know I don't do tardy. Okay. I'm not tardy for the party. Please don't hesitate to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. And as always, stay safe, stay blessed, spread love, not germs. Peace.